Hey, grade 10. This is the meeting 37, I believe. That's pretty good. So 37 meetings uh, since uh, we be began the supplemental learning. And thank you for staying in, uh, in touch and uh, tuning in to these videos. And I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, so I was thinking last night that uh, there should be an explanation about uh, and kind of a review of the novel, um, just breaking it down in regards to how the just war theory applied uh, in this novel. And I've created a visual for you. Um, I'm hoping it's it'll uh, at least help you with the uh, whether whether or not this was a just war. Um, between the international fleet and the buggers and I'm correct me if I'm wrong but uh, I'm pretty sure most of you will say it wasn't a just war um, and the the methods that were applied also were not just so there is that as well um, so let's take a look at the document I created here. And so I, what I've done is I have, uh, I took the, the document and actually I'm gonna go back to this one. This is from the course outline booklet. And so just to re review here, the principle of just war theory uh, number one is the last resort. It's the last option. Um, so it can only be waged after all peaceful op options are considered. The use of force can only be used as a last resort. Now, in the novel, is there any sign that they, the international fleet has uh, considered every peaceful option uh, to avoid another conflict with the buggers? There's, as far as I no, uh, I haven't been able to find anything else. There has been no discussion because there has been no contact uh, with the buggers. So uh, they had the two invasions and then Major Rack Rackham uh, was the unsung hero, I guess, um, that helped to defeat the buggers and send them on their way. And now the, for the decades they've been training kids to have this this big battle uh, that uh, will finish them off once and for all the threat uh, so uh, we get into a real world scenario where uh, there is um, and you can go to go to the history books in this one uh, but uh, there's a so-called threat and so that uh, it, it, it's um, grown out of fear. And uh, of course, uh, um, lack of information, knowledge, that kind of stuff. And so what they don't understand, they, they're afraid of it. And then uh, the more you talk about it, um, more and more people start to believe that it is a threat. And then of course you get your, your different, um, groups that are for and against and so on and so forth and and uh, and then uh, they, they decide to uh, wage war uh, or create a conflict or something like that and so we have our conflict we have the war and pretty soon uh, you know you look back it's like a lot of it could have been prevented had you just had a conversation simple conversation uh, or uh, or maybe made some concessions um, that would have prevented things. The legitimate authority have a proper leader. It's important that uh, there is a proper leader in, in charge of this um, just war, uh, that there, it's not uh, being uh, created by uh, maybe a fanatic or, or something like that. So it's a legitimate authority, somebody who's been voted in, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, and it can, and it says right there, it can, war cannot be waged by individuals or groups that do not make up the lawful government. So we've seen conflicts where there have been 
uh, wars waged by individuals uh, or groups. Um, even just plain civil wars or uh, or protests and things like that that uh, have led to conflict. Just cause, good reasons. Uh, so just war needs to be in response to a wrong suffered. Well, yes, okay. They had uh, the two invasions, so there was a wrong suffered. But they won the second invasion. So does that warrant a retaliation, uh, further retaliation against the buggers? Um, Prob probability of success, what are your chances of winning? So uh, you are going against a full, like a mass of civilization and a civilization that can uh, speak to them, to each other, uh, you know, th uh, from ship to ship and, and, uh, and keep in mind they, they are ant-like, okay? So um, they're very uh, structured uh, civilization and resourceful and so on and so forth. So what are your chances of, of uh, defeating a, such, a, such a society um, when you have so much um, diversity and, and uh, um, different approaches uh, here on earth uh, to, you know, everybody has, has an opinion on how things should work and so on and so forth. Uh, so you're looking at probability of success and, and a nation cannot enter in a war with, with a hopeless cause. The right intention, fighting for the right reasons uh, to get peace back. Okay, so that's what they're pushing through their propaganda. They want peace again. But technically there, there's been an un, un, unofficial peace uh, for decades now. There hasn't, like, there hasn't been a conflict, but uh, if you keep stirring the pot, and uh, you know, if for control of the of uh, the population and and things like that, especially in regards to uh, a third child, the, the third child uh, belongs to the government, so they can do what they want with that child. Uh, the monitors monitoring their children—that's uh, control. That's manipulation. Uh, so it's. Uh, are the right intentions um, apparent in this in this uh, in this this version of Earth? Proportionality uh, only use the amount of force absolutely absolutely necessary. Well, we find out in chapter fourteen that they had this massive weapon, the little doctor, that could decimate everything, and Ender used it. Like if you have a weapon that can finish finish off the uh, the game, and of course they were thinking they're playing a game. You would you, you would use it because it's a tool that's available to you. Uh, so uh, you wouldn't hold on to it, to, you know, and not use it. Uh, so and these are children, mind you. So and, and the adults, they probably would have just uh, jumped on it right right off the bat. Uh, but they created this weapon and and didn't think they were going to have to use it. But at least it would be like they're uh, uh, ace, ace card, I guess, so to speak, and they can play it when they need to play it. Uh, civilian casualties, how many people uh, who weren't soldiers died? So uh, when Ender uses the little doctor, how many innocent civilized, uh, civilized um, buggers uh, were killed um, as a result of using it on the planet? And so if you're thinking it's a game, you you're probably not thinking about civilian casualties or anything like that like that you're looking for points or or uh, maybe more g gaining more resources stuff like that uh, but when you find out it's a game oh it's massive regret massive regret and uh, of course uh, ender does have that regret and he he uh, takes the pseudonym uh, just like uh, peter and valentine did uh, with their pseudonyms uh, he becomes, instead of Ender Wigan, he is now a speaker for the dead. So, um, let's get into the, the document I have here. So, we had last resort, last option for the international fleet as they endured two previous invasions. Okay, check. Legitimate authority, they have a legitimate authority, uh, but there are groups that are against it. And uh, so, we know that... Uh, Russia is against it, and there's other groups as well. Uh, just cause, 
The biggest question is whether planning a preemptive attack against the buggers is warranted, especially since they haven't returned for decades. So we have that in, in doubt or in question. Probability of success. Uh, the chances of success depends on whether the international fleet can find, train, and prepare the children to fight this battle. Okay, so, and they do find the right children uh, to fight the battle, and of course the war is over. It was over before it started, basically, uh, or really started. Right intention, there are groups on Earth that believe the international fleet has too much power and they are using fear to control uh, public opinion and governance. So, the international fleet feels they have the right intention or believes they, they have the right intention, but it's the other groups that are questioning it. And so Locke and Demosthenes uh, create that, that discussion on Earth. And uh, then in the end, it's uh, decided that uh, Locke's uh, viewpoints will be used to bring peace and stability on Earth after this, um, this war. And uh, Ender will be exiled. Uh, and Valentine just that does argue that he should stay away from Earth. Peter wants him to stay away from Earth. Whether that's a form of love and protection, that's up for you to decide. Um, but it, it's it's kind of a skewed version of love. So we'll see what that. Um, if you read the, the the following books, you can find out whether uh, that was such the case or not. Uh, proportionality, how much force is required to fight this battle? Well, if you have, like I talked about this before, if you have a weapon that can decimate everything in his bath, the pro pro proportionality is skewed. So it's totally messed up here. And civilian casualties, I already talked about that, that there's, any time there's war, there's gonna be civ civ civilian casualties. Um, and um, it's, uh, war is, you have to fight. There are some wars you you probably have to fight, but uh, uh, you have to look at the big picture. Who's going to be uh, affected by this, and um, uh, what are your, you know, how many people, civilian casualties, especially, are you willing to to uh, sacrifice in order for victory, in order for you to achieve victory. Um, now, obviously, you're always looking for no casualties. That, that's always the hope, but uh, uh, there's no way you can you can't prevent uh, casualties of any kind. Um, so you have your civilian casualties, and then you also have your casualties of your soldiers who are fighting as well, um, and they're the ones that are fighting on the line, sacrificing there. Um, but you. It's also the civilians that are probably unaware of the uh, the magnitude of what is what this war is doing to the planet, to humanity, and things like that. So um, those are things you need to consider when you're reading the book and ask those questions. And any with any novel, for that matter, uh, that you take up in high school or university or whatever the case, ask those questions uh, and uh, find out, you know, and, and make those connections historically too. Uh, it's always important to validate and, and yes, you have an opinion, everybody has an opinion, but always validate it. So, uh, and open yourself for, for, up for discussion and, and um, question um, because uh, your viewpoints are, are very important and, uh, and uh, it's important to have those discussions. And if we, if we take this world right here, were there a lot of discussions uh, uh, present to uh, decide whether this is a, a just war or not? That's something that would be a really good debate to have. So keep that in mind uh, as you finish up this novel and of course move into other novels for grade 11. Okay, so if you have any questions uh, about that, um, I was just thinking about it last night and I figured, well, we should probably do something uh, about that. So. Let me know, and don't forget, Sunday, uh, May 31st, 3 p.m. Please get your summaries in and your projects and, and begin work on your TED Talks. Take care and be safe.